All right, I want to talk to you about a very interesting topic um, from the scripture that I believe is probably one of your favorites, Psalm 37, verse 4. I mean, this is one of the scriptures that really kept me going. Uh, it's a promise from the Father, and uh, but, you know, there's been questions on, on, on when is this going to happen? When is this going to come to pass? And I believe with what we're going to talk about today, the study that we're going to do uh, uh, from the Word of God will give us uh, a clear answer as to why we don't see uh, this promise coming to pass. Now, let's read Psalm 37, verse number 4. Um, if you have your Bible, just turn with me there. Psalm 37, verse number 4. Uh, most of you guys will get excited as soon as I read this scripture because probably is one of the scriptures that you're standing on and you're saying, Lord, this is what you said in your word and I expect to see this happen. Now, I want to show you something very interesting. It says here in Psalm 37 verse 4, Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. That's the scripture and I know you like it. Because in most cases, our focus is on the second part of the scripture, which says that God will give us the desires of our heart. And I mean, how many of you guys want God to give you a desire, the desires of your heart? And, and, and this is what I've been excited about for so many years, that God will give me the desires of, our, of my heart. And I believe that God wants to give us the desires of our hearts. But I'm sure you believe with me, you'll agree with me, that uh, we haven't seen that happen a lot in our lives. And, and probably you, you, you're frustrated, you're sitting there, you're wondering, but Lord, when am I going to see these desires come to pass? Your word says you will give me the desires of my heart, but I have not seen these desires coming to pass. I believe one of the reasons, so this is what we're going to talk about. I'm, we're going to talk about the reason why we're not seeing our desires coming to pass. The reason why we're not seeing this promise coming to pass. All right, so let's read it again. It says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. I believe God wants to give us the desires of our heart. It is God's uh, uh, um, plan. It is God's desire for us to see our desires come to pass. He wants to see our desires come to pass. He wants to make us happy. He wants to fill them. He wants to uh, uh, be there to happen in our lives. All right. So now, here's what I believe is the reason why we're not seeing the desires of our hearts come to pass. It is because we focus only on the second part of the scripture and we ignore the first part of the scripture. Now, the first part of the scripture says, delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. So he says, they delight yourself also in the Lord. So the question is then, how do I delight myself in the Lord? Or should we say, what is to delight? So the word delight means pleasure. It means joy. It means fulfillment. All right. So if delight means pleasure, joy, and fulfillment, then we can Read the scripture this way, which says, delight yourself also in the Lord. We can read it this way. Find pleasure in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Or find joy in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Or find fulfillment in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of our heart. Now, God wants us to find pleasure in him. God wants us to find joy in him. God wants us to find fulfillment in him. But you tell me, how do you find pleasure in someone? How do you find joy in someone? That's by spending time with them. I mean, when you look at a husband and wife, how they find pleasure in each other is when they spend time together. How they find joy in each other is when they spend time together. So the more time they spend together, the more pleasure they experience or the more pleasure they have. The more time they spend together, the more joy they get. You cannot have joy with someone that you never spend time with. Think about that. You can never find a pleasure 
with someone that you never spend time with. You can never have fulfillment in someone that you never spend time with. So in order for me to have pleasure in God, I must be spending time with God. I must be spending time with his word. I must be spending time in his presence. I must be spending time uh, uh, with everything that has to do with God. In order for me to find joy in the Lord, I must be spending time with God. I can't find joy in God if I never spend time with God. So now, delight yourself in the Lord. Find pleasure in the Lord. Find joy in the Lord. Find fulfillment in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of our hearts. So when I spend time with God, guess what will happen? My desires will be about God, will be about the things of God. You see, spending time with God will change you know, everything about me. I mean, I remember before I got born again, I wanted a lot of things. I wanted to be a quieter star, you know. Before I got born again, I wanted to be a soccer player. I wish I had. <laughs> I wanted to be a whole lot of things, you know. Um, but now when I uh, met Jesus, when I came to the Lord, uh, my desires changed. Not that there was anything wrong with being a soccer player, but there was not the plan that God had for my life. So uh, uh, spending time with God and spending time in his presence and spending time in, in, in church activities and everything, my desires begin to change. And I believe my desires began to change and line up with that which God had prepared for me, with the plans that he had prepared for me. So now, uh, uh, because I was spending time in his presence, I was spending time in church, I was spending time in his word, I was spending time in prayer. And the more I was spending time in the presence of God, the more pleasure I experienced, the more joy I, I experienced and fulfillment. And all of those, they affected my desires. Whatever desires that I had that were not in line with God's plans, they changed. Whatever desires I had that, was not, that were not in line with God's destiny for my life, with God's plan for my life, all of those things changed. And, and my desires started lining up with the Word of God. My desires started lining up with the plans that God has for me. Why? Because I was far, I, was I was fulfilling the scripture, which says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Amen, somebody. So now, remember also in Jeremiah 29, let's go there. Jeremiah 29, verse number 11. We dealt with this uh, last week. We're reading it again. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, he says, For I know the plans that I have for you. God says, I know the plans that I have towards you, says the Lord. Plans of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. So God says, I know the plans that I have for you. And these plans are the plans he wants us to desire. These are the plans, the plans that God is talking about. These are the plans that he wants us to desire. We're not going to walk in the plans that God has for us if we do not desire those plans, if we do not uh, 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 reach for those plans. Are you with me? So he says here, for I know the plans. God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Your teacher don't know the plans that God has for you. Your mother don't know the plans that God has for you. Your father don't know the plans God has for you. And even your pastor don't know the plans that God has for you. Only God, in fact, in fact, the other Bible says, for I alone know the plans that I have for you. Are you with me? So, these are the main things that God wants us to to desire. He wants us to trust him for these plans. He wants us to believe him for these plans. He wants us to seek him for these plans. He wants us to be so focused on these plans that he has for us. Are you with me? I mean, I know we, there's so many things that we want. I mean, we want nice cars. We want beautiful houses. We want to go on holidays. We want, you know, to dress well, to eat the best and all those kind of things. And many times when we pray, it's as if our prayers are only focused on these things that we want. 
Are you with me? There's good things that we want. So if you actually think about it, our prayers are so filled with our selfish wants or desires or things that we want for self. And there's nothing wrong with us having good things. Listen to me carefully. God has no problem with giving us good things. God has no problem with giving us the best. But I do not believe that all these things that we mainly pray about and seek God for are only what God has for us. There are things that are big that God has in store for us. Look at Jeremiah 33 verse number 3. All right. Jeremiah 33 verse number 3. He says here, yeah, call to me and I will answer you. Listen to this. And show you great and mighty things which you do not know. God says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. So there are things about you that are great and there are things about you that are mighty. Another Bible says, I will show you great and unsearchable things. Are you with me? So God says there are things that about you that are great and they are also unsearchable. In other words, you can't, you can't Google those things. Are you with me? You can't ask anyone about those things. You can't find them in, in, in a magazine, in a dictionary, wherever you do. You can't find them anyway. Because they are only in God. And they are only discovered from God. The more time we spend with God, the more we discover these things that he has for us. And I believe, child of God, these are the things that God wants us to desire. These are the things that God wants us to pursue. These are the things that God wants us, uh, uh, God wants to consume everything concerning us. All right. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. We're still talking about the plans that God has in store for us, right? I'm still talking also about uh, God giving us the desires of our hearts. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse number 9, it says there, But as it is written, the eye has not seen, the ear have, have not heard, nor nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Let's read that again. I has not seen, no ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. The Spirit searches the deep things of God. Now, the Bible says, I has not seen. Your eyes has not seen the things that God has in store for you. Ears have not heard about the things that God has in store for you. The heart has not even desired. It has not even uh, 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 longed for the things that God has in store for us. But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. So if eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, the heart has not yet desired. So that to me, it talks about things that are deeper than the car, deeper than the money, deeper than the house, deeper than the holiday, deeper, deeper than all those kind of things that we keep asking God for. Why? Because my heart, my heart has desired. My eye has seen, my ear has heard, my heart has desires the car, the, the, the house, and all these beautiful things. But God says the things that he has in store for us, the things that he's got prepared for us, I has not seen. Hello. The things that he's got prepared for us, those things which are deep and mighty, great and mighty, which I do not know. Those things that he says, they are unsearchable. The eye has not heard them. The ear has not heard them. The eyes, I mean, has not seen them. The ear has not heard them. The heart has not conceived them, has not desired them. But God has revealed them to me and you by his spirit. And he says here, yeah, the spirit, for the spirit searches all things. So the only thing that can find these things for us is this, this spirit. The Spirit of God that searches all things. Google cannot search these things. <laughs> are you with me? Uh, they are searched by the Spirit. They've been revealed to us by the Spirit. So we will need to spend time with the Spirit of God. 
in order for us to uh, 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 get to know these things that God has in store for us. And if we don't spend time with God's word, I mean, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. Are you with me? He says, my words, the words that I speak to you, John 6, 63. He says, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So if the words that Jesus speaks to us are spirit and they are life, and he says, yeah, uh, uh, for the spirit searches all things. That tells me because Jesus said, my words are spirit. That means then his word searches these things. These things are searched by the word. His word searches these things that are deep in God. Are you with me? So, so, so we need to spend time with the word of God because spending time with the word of God and, and studying the word of God, we know that the word of God is spiritual food. It's food for our spirit. So if he says here, yeah, for the spirit searches all things, we can also say the word searches all things. Are you with me? So we need to be those people that are just consumed by the word of God and we just, uh, 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 and just allow the word of God to consume us so that we can desire the things of God and grow in the things of God. Amen, family? I guess you are blessed by that. Wait for part two of this message because we're going to continue with this topic, why we don't see our desires being met. Amen? Bless you.